Are the Rangers and the Orioles going to go head to head again next year in the Rookie of the Year race with Jackson Holiday and Evan Carter? Yes. And they, those will be the two, I think, uh, betting favorites going into next year. And may, there's potentially, just based on the fact that one of these dudes has been tearing up the minor league system, potential that Wyatt Langford could be in that in in that conversation. Yes, yes. if he gets called up soon enough, right? I don't think he's going to be on the 26 man roster out of spring trainer training. Wyatt Langford. Now, is there anything he could do in spring training that would be like Boach is like I just can't not multiple things. Yes, let's just say he bats 400 in spring training and there's an injury. Okay. Because right now, if you look at it, I, I need to look at contracts and everything, but you could see you're starting outfield before trades. There's going to be a lot of offseason. I do think the Rangers are going to look to possibly move an outfielder for a starting pitcher or for bullpen help. And we can get into the who's and what's of that <laughs> but after the next playoffs. year. You would probably say Adolis Leoti and Evan Carter are your starting outfield, and then you'd have kind of veteran guys like Jankowski and Robbie Grossman being your backups. But if Wyatt Lankford tears up big league spring training and somebody's hurt, somebody starts off the year on the injured list, you might go, look, they're only going to have Wyatt Lankford on the team if he's one of your three starting outfielders. Mm -hmm. They're not going to put Wyatt Lankford on the team because he's better than Jankowski or better than Robbie Grossman. He has to be better than Evan Carter, Leody Tavares, or or uh, Garcia. And I don't know if they're going to make that decision in March. But I could see him playing one month in AAA or one month in AA and going, all right, May 1st, it's time. Let's do it. This is this is also an interesting aspect because I think it was C.J. Nikowski that pointed out Corbin Carroll got paid pretty quickly yes. uh, in his career. Yes. Right now, Josh Young looks like your future at third base for however long you want. Right, right. now, he's older because he's a college draft. Okay, pick. so he 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 maybe you're looking like a six year deal with him. You would that would buy out one year of free agency. <clears throat> I don't know if I would if if I'm doing a deal with him, I would love to do probably an eight year deal. Okay. Um with Evan Carter, do you think that they're gonna sit there and say, Hey, we're gonna put you through all these years of arbitration and no, all this? I, you think I they're think they're going, and, I think they're gonna try to work on a ten to, to 12, 12 year deal with him this like offseason. Tatis and like uh yeah. okay. Tatis got a thirteen year deal. Uh obviously they did a great deal with Ronald Acuna Jr. Just think about how much money he'd be making next year. He would be a free agent. So you'd have one more year and he'd be a free agent. Probably you're looking at 45 mil a year. You're probably looking at a 10 year, $450 million contract next year for Acuna, but they signed him to an eight year deal after his rookie year. So they don't have to worry about it. And you protect him money wise. They only gave him like 10 or $11 million a year. Yeah. So you have to look at it. So just think about the money that they're going to save on a guy like Acuna. So I would say with a guy like Evan Carter, I'm not saying he will sign the deal, but I think the Rangers are going to offer him something like in the off season to see if he wants to do it like a 10 year, $120 million deal. Wow. It might be more than that. It might be 160 million, maybe even up to 200 million. Maybe, Hey, you want to do a 10 year, $200 million contract where you're going to make 20 a year. And we don't have to worry about him being a free agent until 2033. Yeah. That might be nice. Might be nice to have that in place. All right. Now on the field in these playoffs, it is weird to me. And Mike, I, we started going through that list earlier of the stars in the playoffs that are left right now. Yeah. And it was kind of fascinating at how many young players you pointed out, how many young players there are. The Rangers having, and I know Adolis isn't, uh, he, he isn't young right. by any age means, but he's this is his first playoff runs here. Uh, it's it was fun to see two very young players, the future of your franchise, being part of it, and not just a bit piece of it, being like a huge piece of it. It kind of reminded me a little bit of uh, Elvis Andrus. I know in those World Series runs, he was part of it, but he was. He was kind of on the back end of everything for those guys, but he was still making some significant plays, stealing bases and stuff right. like that. Playing a great defensive shortstop. Yeah, and but here we are with two young. This is again, what did we, what did Leslie say yesterday that the statistic that they won in Tampa exactly twelve years ago the like the same thing? I'll have I don't to go know back if it was the exact date. I but. looked at the I, there was a there was a stat that I saw yesterday, and I'll have to go back and look. Uh, because I did retweet it. I was a big fan uh, of that statistic. 
but it was very a very significant thing about how the Rangers did something very similar. Yeah, all right. The Rangers are the first team to open a postseason with consecutive road wins by four plus runs since the 2010 Rangers okay. against the Rays. And so just seeing like those pictures of Elvis Andrus and Ian Kinsler, a very young group at the time. Right. And they grew up really quickly, but they were a very young group at the time, and you felt like you had some future with these guys. Yeah. And it looks good. Evan Carter and Josh Young, what a series. Yesterday they go four for six. Uh, a home run, a triple, and a double. Because I believe... No, it might have been two doubles for because he had the triple. I'm I'm trying. I know he had a triple and a double. Josh Young had the one. I know you went one for two with a hit by pitch and a walk by Evan Carter. I keep up with everything that he does because even I went and broke down his last at bat. He was had a one two count. He fouled off four pitches, took another pitch for a ball, and then got hit by a pitch. That was his last at bat, Evan Carter, where he got hit with the back foot slider. They have a double and a triple listed for Young. Okay, so two two, two doubles and a triple. Yeah. So now, if you look at the the one double he hit, it was a rocket into the wall, right? A one hop rocket into the wall. Which, by the way, when that ball is stuck up there, that was really stupid to take the ball out of the wall because now it's still a live ball. Oh, really? So if you just put your hands up when the ball gets stuck into the wall. Or underneath the wall. You just put your hands up. They just look at it and go, yeah, we can see it's stuck. It's dead ball, ground rule, double. When you go and reach for it and try to pull it out, it's still a live ball. You try to pull it out again, it's still a live ball. Now, if the ball stays stuck in there, you can put your hands up going, hey, it never. Uh, I can never get it out of the wall. They can say, okay, because the ball's stuck. But if you keep reaching for it and then eventually you pull the ball out and it falls down, that was a live ball the whole time. You played it as a live ball. Interesting. Okay, I, I I didn't think about that. And whenever I watch it, it didn't look like the Rangers were taking advantage of it anyway. There was nobody on base. But, so it was Josh Young who could have ran to third, which he couldn't have made it. He hit it so hard. And um, uh, uh, Randy Rosarina was the guy who got it. He jumped up and got it first time. No problem. The ball's a live ball. So if you thought it's immediately dead because it got stuck, it's not immediately okay. dead. Uh, that's why they tell you as an outfielder, you need to raise your hands in that situation. Do not touch the ball because if you go and you touch the ball and you jar it loose or you don't jar it loose and then you go and try to get it again and you do jar it loose, it's a live ball. You decided to make it a live ball. Uh, from the 972, Mike, do you have a Young or Carter rookie card? I have plenty of Carter rookie cards. Um, I do not have any Josh Evan Young. Carter. Evan Carter, as our Carter was demanding yeah, that you call him. Yes. The little savior. <laughs> Full count. The chosen one. Which nickname the is real he going to stick deal. with? Which, which nickname is he going to stick with? It's when you're this good. <laughs> you know what? He might just go by Evan. He might be Ichiro. You know? Okay. I I wanted to ask you this real quick. My, my plumber, Michael Talbot, he's fantastic. I think I see him. I, do I know him? I know him. Right? Probably so. He's a okay. good dude, man. He he reached out to me yesterday. He texted me and he's like, "Dude, Evan Carter reminds me of Ichiro." He said, "You know, the, all, all right, the different skills, style of hitting, but yeah, he could be a guy. Now he's going to walk so much. I don't know if he's going to accumulate the 200 hits per year every year that Ichiro did because he has such a an eye that he's like, I'm going to draw 80 to 100 walks a year." When you draw 80 to 100 walks a year, it's tough to also get 200 hits. Yeah, okay. All right, so you think his, because he's such a patient hitter, yeah. that's going to keep him from being the Ichiro type guy. I, I do, because just, if you draw 100 walks and you get 200 hits, you had close to a 500 on base percentage. And nobody really has close to a 500 on base percentage. I think he's kind of probably talking about the hitting from the left side. For sure. Uh, For sure. The fact that the dude has great command. He's going to get on base zone. as much as Ichiro, just maybe not as many hits. As he throw in, I don't know. It's early in his career, but he's showing such power promise in 20 major league games with six home runs now that you're like, dude, this does happen. If you go look at Ken Griffey Jr. got called up at 19 years old, and it's not fair to compare him to Ken Griffey Jr. And I don't think he's ever going to be a 40 plus home run guy. I do think Wyatt Lankford has the ability to be a 40 plus home run guy. There's more maturing and everything to do with, with Wyatt Lankford. But now you start looking at Evan Carter at 20, 21 years old, and you go, wait a second. If he's doing this this quickly with this much power, this quickly in his major league career, you start going, could he be a guy who's a 25 to 30 home run guy early in his career and maybe progresses to 35 home runs? You know who couldn't hit home runs? Corey Seager. 
we don't think of Corey Seager, right? He was a guy who would live around the 20 to 25 home runs with the LA Dodgers. He's a bigger guy than Evan Carter. But now all of a sudden we look at Corey Seager, we're like, dude, if he's healthy next year, if he's able to play in 140 games, I think he's going to hit 40 home runs. Yeah. And Corey Seager coming over to the Rangers was more like, no, he's going to hit 40 doubles, uh, maybe even get to 50 doubles, which is a lot. And he's probably going to be like a 20 to 28 home run guy. And this year he had 33, if I have my number right, in a limited amount of games because of injury. So power can can come later in a career that you sometimes don't expect. But now at 21, he's showing this power. He's looking like he could be a guy who early in his career is able to hit you 25 home runs from, I'm going to assume, the leadoff spot next year. Yeah, Corey Seager did finish with 33 last year and 33 this year. So that's back-to-back seasons. Never had 30? Uh, Before that, 26 was the most he had. Yeah. But he was 26, 22, two in the short season. Uh, Nope, that was injury. Yep, no, the short season. And then he was 19, 15, 16. Yeah. Injuries obviously played into that. And then 33, 33 when he gets to Texas. So that's... I mean, I think that's another part of just him yeah. saying taking on the role he got to when he got it here. It will be interesting with Josh Young. We talked to Steve Bouchel earlier, and Boo talked about maybe that three-hole. Like, everybody agrees, yes, Robbie Grossman's not a three-hole hitter, especially on a playoff team. It's just the way that it so happened with Nate Lowe getting cold, and Nate Lowe does have a real excuse. His mom has cancer. Mm-hmm. He's dealing with a lot in the month of September and here in October. He's excited to play baseball. He's giving it his all, but just understand – His mom's sick. His mom has cancer. And that's not an easy thing to just go out there and be at your best. This is a way to get away from those feelings and those thoughts. But when the game's over, when he's in his hotel, when he's, you know, calling up his mom and dad, there is real conversations about his mom really being sick. That's not the easiest time to perform at your best when those things are happening to you. So he's struggling for multiple reasons. Uh, Adolis Garcia is a streaky guy. He's he's a man when he's hot, he's hot. When he's not, he's not. He's not like Joey Gallo, like cold, but he can get hot and cold. So you look at the Rangers have this situation. I'm wondering, Josh Young, he did get three hits yesterday. Do you move Josh Young all the way from eight to three he's, to try to get more protection behind Corey Seager? Or do you wait another game and go, it worked out. We scored 10 runs in two playoff games. I'm throwing out the same lineup game one. You know, one of the things that Boach, when it comes to pitchers, you know, I've asked you about this. You you taught me this this year. Boachy taught me this this year. Is whenever they decide, you know what, we are going to move on to our relief uh, pitcher here. Thanks for your, your job today. It's whenever you see him hit hard. Uh, oh, we he was getting hit hard there. He was really good at controlling early in the game. And then that last inning, he was getting hit hard by those guys. It was time to go ahead and get our relief pitcher. I feel like Bochy's probably watching Josh Young that way. If they're seeing him do... I remember Ron Washington was talking about Nelson Cruz. And he was like, look, when he's hitting doubles into the gaps, that's when Nelson Cruz is on. Yeah. His home runs, like he'll hit home runs. But doubles in the gaps that are line drive shots, that's Nelson Cruz's game right there. So if they start seeing him do that, I think that I, I would do it. Just because I love the combination back there, but... I think Young, he's done it this season. He was up there this season. Let's get him back into this. Just think, and you're talking about the future of the Orioles, the future of the Rangers, and our Rangers. And I can say in 2025, I don't know in 2024, but in 2025, we're having an issue right now with three-hole in this playoffs. When you're healthy in 2025, your first five hitters in any order, I'll put them in this order right now, will be Evan Carter, one, Marcus Simeon, two, Corey Seager, three, Wyatt Lankford, four, and Josh Young, five. And then then you get to Jonah Heim. Then you get to maybe Nate Lowe or a different first baseman. Then you get to Leody Tavares, and you get to possibly if Adolis Garcia is still here. So right now this lineup is a good-looking lineup. But there's a strong possibility that next year Evan Carter is at the top of your lineup and Wyatt Lankford is added to your lineup. And then in 2025, you have Carter, uh, Young, and Wyatt Lankford sandwiching Simeon and Seeger. You know, the other thing that I had with Josh Young, Mike, that I I didn't notice until Bochy said it, I think last week or maybe a couple weeks ago, Young's the first one out of the dugout at the top of the dugout when things go good. He has a little bit of Derek Jeter like energy to yes. him. And just think of I it's not it, just dude. him. I don't want to give him all of this credit, but you do have to give him some. 
Rangers, I think, lose 16 of 20 games right around there. Josh Young activated from the injured list, and the Rangers, I think, like win 11 of 15. Yeah. And I'm not I'm not giving Josh Young all of that credit, but I do think he does deserve some of that credit. One, because of his play. Two, because of the energy he brings to the team. Energy, young leadership. I used to say the th- same thing about uh, Elvis. He'd be the first dude over that over the wall to go congratulate people. I love when somebody hits a home run, they come back into the dugout. There's Josh Young right there to fist bump him, uh, forearm bump him, whatever it is, and do a little dance. It's a lot of fun to see.